There's a local battle in the All Progressives Congress right now over a judgment that was issued a while ago. And the man in the middle here is the chairman of the caretaker committee, Maimala Boni. And lots of questions over the legality of his chairmanship. Um, Won't you juxtapose that with Article 17, 4 of the APC Constitution, um, which states that no officer in any organ of the party shall hold an executive position of office in government. And also, um, Section 180 three of the Nigerian constitution, which, uh, you know, goes on to say that a governor shall not during the period when he holds office, go ahead to hold any other executive office or paid employment in any capacity whatsoever. And that's why May Malabuni um, seems to be, you know, a subject of controversy right now in the All Progressives Congress. Uh, joining us to discuss this is a risk and policy management expert, Mr. Oshinawa Ibrahim. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, guys. Good morning, viewers. Good morning, Nigeria. Let's begin with how you assess that Supreme Court judgment that has now put the fate of uh, May Malabuni hanging in the balance. It, 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 yes. Um, thank you for having me again. Um, it's a pleasure to be here once again. Um, I would like to make some correction and you know clear some. Uh, doubting terms, who are prejudging or rewriting the Supreme Court's judgment about our great party. Um, I know most of the um, references that have been profoundly mentioned is all about uh, Governor Kerberos' Excellency, about the judgment that was delivered four to three. I won't I say, I won't say that um, the Judgment has never in any in any chapter of the judgment. I think the judgment came out. I think this previous week, you know, midweek, maybe Wednesday, Thursday. You know, some of our, our party leaders and party members, we just you know have to go through it. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, but of course I have some very strong background on elements of law and the rest of it. So, at any point, this section. Um, um, say Article 17 that we mentioned Hall, but this is our constitution here. Yeah, this is the constitution. I'm showing you. It has no, the judgment under any guideline has no effect on Governor Bonin's being in office. The Article 17 statedly states clearly that the party, the party can and we have, can organize or inaugurate an ad hoc committee. An ad hoc, ad hoc committee has no salary. Ad hoc committee has no benefit. It's just a voluntary job. <clears throat> and the judgment clearly states that the party or the holder of the national chairman's office is, is, not, the, is not part of the process of nomination. The process of nomination starts from on those states, from the world, <clears throat> from the world to local government to local government to the state, these are the people that voted for Akiri Dolu, not Governor Bonin. It's not the one that nominated Governor Akiri Dolu. It's just the custodian of a vacant in APC national leadership. That's all. So there's no merit or basis for cancellation of the nomination. The nomination is not is constitutional. It's thorough, it's distant. Uh, Mr. Professional. It and it follows our party guidelines. So everybody should not be mentioning Article 17, uh, Section section oh. 183 of the Constitution. Mr. Oshinawa. Constitution has amended. So Mr. Oshinawa, we are not going to be clear on yeah. this issue at all. Yeah, so, 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 you know, you've stated that, you know, but I, um, I think one of the concerns, you know, is... You know, and the way that it has been painted is, you know, Akira Dulu basically, you know, has been lucky that he, you know, was able to, you know, skip <clears> this stage and, you know, has been, of course, uh, granted, uh, you know, the governorship, uh, governorship uh, seat. Um, but the challenge really is with further elections, you know, in the APC. And that I think that is what Festus Kayamo was pointing out, that, you know, if this goes like, you know, this way, it is possible that the chairmanship of May Malabuni will be challenged in court with other APC elections in the state and you know at the federal level, 
So isn't that a big enough concern, seeing that, you know, both the APC's constitution and the, you know, Nigerian constitution state clearly, you know, that, you know, as a governor, he should not be at the same time the, you know, the chairman of the Ketka committee. You just said it now, caretaker committee. It's not the only caretaker committee chairman that we have, or of committee chairman that we have. The governor, His Excellency Governor Lusule of Nasarawa State, is also a member of an other committee. Other governors are sharing one or two committees of our party. These are voluntary work. I wonder why this is all about the uh, Bune, Governor Bune. You can pick other committee chairman, other committee chairman who are sharing other committees. It's the same process. There are not any salary. It's not an executive job. The one it, Section 118 of the Nigerian Constitution, 1999 Constitution, you are mentioning, specifically states that executive office is not collecting any salary. It's just a voluntary, a voluntary um, activities. That's what is crying out. So well, what I don't want to really uh, join issues with my dear friend and brother. Um, First of all, we have what I said in the, in, the, uh, in the cabinet. I was expecting, I don't know if you have, of course, see or um, uh, uh, read what Governor Fashola said. He's one of the sound, um, one of the sound members of our party, legally, and other member of the party. So he has raised his opinion. It doesn't mean his opinion is legally correct. So, Mr. Mr. Is Mr. Ibrahim. Okay. It's 183. And 183 said, an executive position whatsoever during the PDP, during the um, during the um, uh, um, former former national chairman of PDP, um, the former governor of Nasarawa State, uh, Niger State, so many committees. Abiyo was a committee chairman. When they removed Muazu, somebody said came in as an interim chairman, a committee, another committee to champion the activities and um, of the of the party. So it's not a big issue. Malami said also has submitted his own legal opinion about it. I understand what all these, um, you know, uh, uh, what PDP, I can mention, is saying. You know, they're just looking for a loophole, but the judgment is out. Well, it's, not, it's not just the PDP. I, 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 and that's why I mentioned Festus Kayamo. It's not the PDP now. Um, so so are I'm you saying, saying that Festus Kayamo may not only, understand? Festus only made his own submission. It doesn't mean it's correct. Uh, Mr. Kitova is a legal advisor of the party. He's one of the best lawyers in this country, especially from the southwest. So he has made his own submission. Same goes to um, Professor Yemi Oshibadu. Same goes to Governor Fashola. People like Mohammed is also a lawyer. He has made his own submission. And I'm sure you are aware that our governors were in Abuja last night making other submissions, doing other, you know, other ex getting other external legal opinions. So there is no issue. What festivals raised was just a pure concern. And those concerns have been attended to by the Attorney General of the Federation. Okay, Mr. Ibrahim, so I wanted to me, ask you... I believe the party is on the right path and we can proceed with our congresses and, and convention at the end of the day. Okay, I think this whole crisis all began with that nomination of Akiri Dulu. You, you mentioned here that he did not, but that's what we have in the news, that it all begins with the fact that he made that, uh, he, he nominated Akiri Dulu um, for that election. And moving on, you mentioned the fact that um, this is a voluntary office, that they're not being paid salaries, but that's what we have in Nigeria's constitution. Looking at the APC constitution, it went on to clearly state that, you know, no governor should actually have go ahead to head an organ of the APC. So in this case, does it not mean that the APC is what, actually... What section, what section are you quoting? We're talking, about what section, we're talking about that same section 17. So when you look at how Boni was, you know... Um, ascended into that role as the um, chairman of the caretaker committee, considering the Article 17 of the APC Constitution, does it not then mean that the APC itself is violating its own constitution? Please, um, Article 17 that you are quoting, this is Article 17. I want you to mention where that this constitution, our constitution, and part of this constitution, the Southwest Committee on APC Constitution, in 2000, uh, in 2013, mm -hmm. I'm part of, I'm representing one of the Southwest states. Now, look at this, this Article 17. Don't mind all those who are prognosing. During 
Anytime there is a convention, congresses, people try to hold one or two party arms. And it's not a big deal that you are seeing this opinion. There is no way here. I'm seeing it here. This is last like seven the tenor of off. Now, let's go back. What you are saying is that a government cannot hold any any office. As a quality of the same of the same of the same constitution empowers us to set up a standing and other committee. This is it. And this will be inaugurated by the National Executive Committee. Mr. Ibrahim, my name is not doing any executive or uh, paid job. So you don't you don't agree that this is an executive of a chairman of the committee on agriculture, chairman annual committee on this on investment, chairman committee on mobilization and party validation. Mr. Ibrahim, are you, are are you then, yeah, so are you then saying that you would not describe, you know, him being chairman of, of this committee as an executive office? You don't you don't think it's you know the way it is being painted? You think it's just a mere voluntary <laughs> Or like look, at, look at look at look at the, look at the look at the um, look at the, um, the the Supreme Court the fourth or three they clearly mentioned there that the process of nomination the prayer of PDP is that the nomination of Akhil is invalid but the Supreme Court the wise men the seven the four wise men mentioned that the process of nomination of any candidate must be constitutional. And follow the electoral guideline, which the nomination of Akedulu is strictly in compliance with the constitution and the electoral guideline. Me Malakuni does not conduct primary, he does not, he's not the one that voted for Akedulu. The process emanated from Ondo State, from Ondo State, from his work to local government, to state, and they have to they brought the process to the national. Um, uh, officers. So that's just what happened. It's not in. Mr. Ibrahim, I'm... I'm and besides, the committee, that's why I mentioned that. Why don't you put a nice other committee? Okay. Mr. As Ibrahim, I, I want... Mr. Ibrahim, I want us to take this step by step and maybe go back to how May Malabuni, you know, became okay. the chairman mm -hmm. of the caretaker committee of the APC. We remember when the APC had that leadership crisis back in 2020 with Victor Giadom and all of that. And the APC went ahead mm -hmm. to actually appoint May Malabuni as chairman of the Caretaker Committee when they dissolved the National Working Committee. So you saying it's a voluntary role, he's not being paid. I don't know about him being paid, but the voluntary is what's in contest here. Because May Malabuni was actually appointed by the APC as that role. So are you saying that appointment is not an executive office? That's what I said. It's not an executive office. It's a committee job that His Excellency is doing. He's not doing any paid job. It's just a nomination that, okay, um, come and serve on Madam so -so, so 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 Come and chair this committee for 10 or 3 months or 4 months. No letter of appointment. It's just a voluntary job. So, if he's doing a voluntary job, acting on behalf of APC, the whole runs the activities of the party according to this constitution. It's the national secretary. Okay, so Mr. Ibrahim, if you and say this is a... Activities of this Mr. Ibrahim, if you say this is a voluntary job, yes. and we know that right now, the fact that um, Boni is the bone of contention. That's the reason why lots of people are concerned. Some people are saying this is unconstitutional. Others are saying, no, it's, it's legal. Since it's a voluntary job, what for, to solve these issues, would you recommend that Buni just step down? Yes, that, that's a very serious question. And I will have to take a breath to, you know, to go into that. Um, personally, personally, I will advise that there is no, there is no way we will amount crisis to crisis. If I'm in a position um, to 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 recommend or to provide solution to all these issues, I would study the Supreme Court judgment because three is a good number, four is a brilliant number, three is a good number, four is a lovely number. So somebody said to me some days ago, 
it could, you know, the judgment is clear. One is one. The margin is one. So one is is, is the winning number there. We, we, we want our party leaders to look inward and possibly, possibly, because he's doing a good job. He's doing a good job. And we have recommended also to seek further external opinion. And this they've done. And we have also done, there's a committee I'm part of right now that we're looking into other areas that I can't discuss on the national team. But I can really, my opinion right now is to allow him to finish what he has started. He's on a lawful path. He's doing very well. He has been able to bring three governors into our party. Uncountable senators, as of press member, former senators, even a BOT member of the PDP. And some governors are coming, particularly one in the southwest, in the in, in the southern parts of the country, in the in probably two or three in the southern parts of this country, including Governor Wicked, possibly. So the party is at the peak. It's driving. It's a, it's a good party man. They have known him since he was a, 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 a CPC. He moves as a substantive secretary of our party. Interim secretary, substantive secretary, I've worked with him. He's a gentle, brilliant man. So I will, I will advise the party to align to finish his term, to take us into the convention. And of course, the national chairman will emerge. What I would say is that the convention should come on time so that we can have a lot of time to do some other things and look focused because 2023 is just within 2022. We are just going into election in 2023 February. All the process of nomination. Party activities will start in 2022. So, what I will advise the leadership of the party is to allow the convention to 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 come on time. There is no time to waste. We are, know that PDP are watching. They are, of course, Labour trying to see where we're going to nominate a candidate, maybe from the north or from the south. Then they can take advantage of that, you know. So they should stop opposing. They should stop opposing to our party. A single guy, a Father Christmas has hijacked their party. I told Kola on another forum, a, a single, just one person has hijacked their party. Well, because, um, because he has the money of his Father Christmas. Well, so, Mr. this is the issue of the they have it. Yes, please. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I, I always just want to... Every season you know, on the right track. Yeah, and you know, and you, you've like you've said, you know, they're on the right track, and you would ask, you know, ask that uh, Boni, you know, finishes his tenure. You know, I, I really just wanted to say that the the conversations here are really not, you know, about you know how the PDP is faring. You know, it's really about you know Festus Kayamo's views, and of course other APC members that have thought, you know, that Boni should step down so that the APC, you know, doesn't have any legal challenges going forward because you know Akira Dulu's. Uh, case has, of course, been settled, you know, but the, the fears are with future elections, you know, for the governorship and, of course, uh, with uh, the 2023 general elections. Um, but like you've stated, you know, it's nothing illegal that he's doing. And it's pretty much the same thing with uh, Ovi Omar Gege, uh, who says, you know, pretty much the same thing that the executive seat uh, or the, you know, position as the Ketikat committee chairman is not an executive seat and neither is it a, a salaried uh, seat. Um, how do you, of course, uh, see things playing out in the next uh, couple of years, uh, all the way to the build-up of the elections? A lot of um, a lot of things are going to unfold. One, you know, defections back and forth. Some people is going to leave APC, that's for sure. The um, the defection season is yet to come. It's like a premiership season. By the last, say, you know, um, uh, quarter of this year, you will see a lot of infection. After the nomination of probably, uh, after the convention, people are still going to leave APC, but APC will gain more from PDP because PDP are still not, you know, we have no opposition in this country. But well, as a Democrat, I would prefer a very sound opposition. Um, we wish our party well. We are expecting the president to come back so that, of course, the neck of the party can hold. Then we can have, you know, substantive guidelines on how to move forward. Of course, um, our party uh, will increase some of our social benefits, will increase some of our activities in terms of infrastructure, 
you know, security that has been a you know, major challenge in sub saharan Africa uh, to increase it. And, you know, uh, we, particularly on our external board, you know, we have been advising as a professional to measure the risk involved in you know, securing foreign loans, especially on uh, loans that are not, uh, you know, productive. You know, there is no way that you um, you will deal with uh, external and foreign loan or capital projects that will the risk level in terms of repayment, in terms of you know uh, economic implications and the rest of it. Because if a country is so dependent on foreign aid, it has its own implication. So we are advising our party professionally on how to measure and calculate our risk in terms of securing you know foreign loans. You know, also what is the risk level? On some of the projects that have been, you know, carried out by Minister of Works, how are they mentioning uh, the, the the economic impact of those projects? In, you know, in terms of you know, uh, building roads, rails, and uh, you know, major infrastructure like uh, Fort uh, uh, the bridge in the southeast. Uh, uh, for what is the, the second Niger bridge. bridge? Second Niger bridge, which is one of the, one of the, a major, you know, you know, um, uh, investment in this uh, in this administration. Is it going to be a PPP arrangement? Is it going to be, a, you know, a toll free? Because of course, right now, there is, of course, from my own, you know, record, almost about almost about forty billion is on that project, you know, budgeted for. Are we going to commercialize that to have more revenue? You know, I read in the papers, which is part of our submission, that they are, the increments in, you know, plate numbers and rules, okay, you know, because of the economic hardship right now, who are vice party at the point to, even, you know, um, discuss with these agencies that, you know, increasing, you know, some certain level of, you know, social amenities, you know, like plate numbers, like driver licenses at this point in time, is irrelevant. That is not the way to increase. Is your revenue? You know what is custom doing? A lot of loopholes in the customs as a, you know, uh, 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 right now. We can look into what custom is doing. How can we block loopholes around borders? What is going on there? You know, people comes in from you know other part of the country like uh, like a cas like Casina, like uh, like uh, Kano, Cardino. You know, they share a lot of boundaries. You know, with all this, you know, Cameroon, Niger. People are, you know, a lot of smuggling coming out there. How can we protect our land borders? What can we do to, you know, to mitigate, you know, loss of revenues and increase the? Do, do you think there's still? A, do you think? So, do you think there's still enough time between now and 2023 to get these things, you know, sorted? These challenges that you've mentioned, you know, and also bearing in mind yes. that um, there's there's also be, been complaints with regards to the loans that you've also mentioned. You know, how profitable have these loans been to the Nigerian populace and how are we ever going to pay back these loans? We currently are borrowing every year to finance our budget because of a budget deficit. Um, do you think that by 2023 we would be in a you know, much better place economically and we would be bold enough as a country to say that we've achieved you know, very, very much with the amount of money that we've borrowed? I can tell you for free that this government, no government anywhere in the world, especially in a developing country like ours, will survive without, you know, going for, you know, foreign aids, foreign loans. You can you can do away with aids, foreign loans. For instance, you can't build a real, in this present, you know, defective microeconomy that we are managing in West Africa. We are so much dependent on foreign, you know, products. Our production level is so small, you know, we can't really produce more because of. We have encouraged our government, of course, to invest, invest hugely on power, because when you have power, sustainable power, you will be able some side, some segment of the economy will be able to thrive. You know, some SMEs will be able to survive in terms of, you know productivities are contributing, they are putting to the GDP of the country. Right now, there is no country in West Africa that will survive without a loan. How do I mean? To build, of course, I have taken a loan from Lagos to Ibadan, and from Ibadan to Kano, or from Lagos to Kano is coming up soon. So these are capital projects, capital investment that we don't have the chance. I, I, I don't know if you do remember that 
when we um, came into office, the oil prices at, as at that time was almost about $24 or $20. It has never been like that. This is uncertainty, uncertainty that will forestall a new administration. We don't have other revenue than I was advising the, the Minister of um, the Minister of Mine and Steel, um, uh, 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 architect Lekon, Lami Lekon. He, he was my colleague back in the days in, at the state level. We have advised that what federal government can generate on mining alone in this country is sufficient, not to talk of agriculture. You know, we have also made submissions on devolution of power. You know, agriculture is on the concurrent list. Of course, states can also do one or two things in agriculture. Why don't we do mine and steel also on concurrent, you know, so that the state can make use of what they have at their back here? Mr. Oshinawa, you know, it's not, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think and, and I've said this over and over, that I don't think, you know, we have a, you know, a lack of ideas on what <laughs> we need to do as a country in order to increase our revenue. I've spoken about blocking leakages. I've spoken about, of course, the mines and steel development, agriculture, you know, what the customs, like you mentioned, is doing. There's so many, many um, ways, ways which which Nigeria can increase its revenue and, you know, reduce its, its need to borrow. But in six years, if we are where we are today, do, do you think that we maybe could have done better um, with the time that with the, your, well, you said we got into power? So do you think that your party could have done better with regards Nigeria's revenue generation? Honestly, honestly, let me be honest with you. We are doing, doing very, very fine. But we can do better. We are doing very, very fine. But we can do better. The president has done graciously well. I can tell you that. You know... The, the president is currently not no in... President the president is currently not in Sorry? the country. Um, according to reports, you know, he's in the UK for... It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything is not in the country. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, it, for health ch uh, reasons, once again. And, of course, this was not part of our plan today, but let, let's bring that in. Do you think in six years we could have had better health care enough to have the president treated here? We are, we are developing our health sector. Look at the last budget. I don't know if you have seen it. The president is able to manage a pandemic that could have consumed more than more than over 10 or 5 million Nigerians for free. The president has done very, very well in, in, in that sector, in that sector, yeah, able to curtail the pandemic. The America, the so-called power of the world, couldn't do that. They had a president that could not manage Look at the numbers in America. Look at the look at the cases. Oh, wow. Despite the fact they have all that it takes to manage this pandemic, they could not do it. The Americans are for, they are frustrated. They show they show their frustration at the poor by forcing that gentleman out because of solely because of pandemic. He could not control it. He could not use all at his disposal to shred and contain. But President Muhammad Bari is able to do that. He contained, he contained all this, all the, the, the programming. And I give it to the Secretary of the Federation as well, Boss Mustafa. They are working all night. All right. All right, Mr. Up, Mr. Up, Mr. Ibrahim. So you and I will not be here. We don't have the leadership to do that. All right, Mr. Ibrahim, just... I lost somebody close to me. Love him. So you just, we have to... I want to employ the media to give it to... Mr. President, wherever he's doing, he has done very, very well when it comes to health management and, you know, uh, in this country. And I have to give it to the minister, the minister for state as well, you know. All right. So they have done we, very we, well. We, 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 we wish we had more time. Mr. Well Shinoa, you know, we wish we had more time to go deeper into these, you know, issues and questions. But unfortunately, we have to wrap up here. Uh, but thank you anyway for joining us. We appreciate thank your time you. this morning. Always uh, interesting listening to your perspectives. Always. It's my pleasure. Nice to have you guys. Thank you so much. All right. Seeing that he's a member of the APC, um, if we had more time, I'd love to ask him more questions about this caretaker committee. We know that when this was instituted um, in 2020, it was supposed to be just for a few months with the whole crisis with the National Working Committee of the APC when it was dissolved. 
But then, you know, this has now gone on longer than expected. The president has extended the tenure of May Malabuni as chairman. But we know that the, the, the mandate should be for the organ of the National Working Committee, not for the person, regardless of whoever is chairman of the caretaker committee. So I was going to ask him, how soon should we be expecting to see a well-constituted National Working Committee of the All Progressives Congress? So is it going to be just a caretaker committee up until 2023? But I guess uh, we'll have to wait and see um, what the answers will be. Um, we'll take a break here and go straight to the Southeast um, to check up on the um, IPOB sit-at-home order.